Good evening, the gathering at Scott Memorial. This is Pastor Stephanie. For some announcements this week, Scott Sisters is having their Mexican night this Tuesday. All women of the church are invited. We have a church security and risk management training this Saturday for all who would like to attend. And we are serving Meals on Wheels October 28th through November 1st. So feel free to sign up for that. Also, we are moving to one service. Uh, that will be starting November 3rd, and it's at 10 a.m. to two hands, 10 o'clock, not 10.15, um, and we are excited to be doing this. We're doing it for a couple reasons. The first reason is for healing, as I've been able to do the pastor meet and greet and just be talking to you all. I've noticed that we just need some healing as a congregation and community is another reason. Several of you have mentioned that you don't feel like you know each other as well as you'd like, and so be a great time for us to be one community for a little while and then also to it provides for space for some discipleship and small groups so we will have small groups offered before the service hopefully starting november 3rd but stay tuned for more information as we're putting those together all right so we have been looking at the enneagram for the last several weeks and so the enneagram is kind of a christian personality understanding and all the personality tests that I have taken in my life help me to better understand myself and help me to better understand how I tick and why I do the things I do. But they also are wonderful for understanding the people we love because the people we love likely operate a little differently than the people than we do. And so I don't know about you, but usually the disagreements I have with people I love dearly are because we think differently and because we communicate differently. We I think someone is in my head and can understand exactly what I'm saying, but that's not the case because we are different people and have different personality types. So the Enneagram just helps us to better understand these personality types and how what makes them tick and also what they struggle with more than some other personality types. So we've looked at ones and they're the perfectionists. They are the ones who are always seeking to make the world a better place. We've looked at twos and they are the helpers. They are the ones who are motivated by the need to help and help all the time. Threes are the ones who are driven by the need to succeed. And so these are the ones who set goals and do them. Fours, those are our artists and the, perf um, not the performers, that was three, um, and the individualists. So they are the ones who just have a very wide range of emotions and feel unique. And while this is something that, um, they are excited that they are unique. Sometimes it's also a struggle and also their pitfall. So today we're looking at fives, and fives are the investigator, as the Road Back to You calls them. And so the Road Back to You says that they are motivated by a need to understand. They hold on to a scarcity mentality, which can lead to hoarding time, space, and affection. They feel more at home observing rather than participating in the external world, and thinking for them substitutes for feeling. And they tend to be minimalist. They don't need a lot of things. They're fine with just a little bit. Then Enneagram 5, uh, the Christian perspective, the book by Richard Rohr, he calls them the need to perceive. So they are open and receptive to new facts and impressions. They are discoverers of new ideas. They are objective and questioning, and they're interested in exploring things in detail. And they are good listeners because they pay very close attention to detail but they often feel empty and long for fulfillment. Now fives, per oh, let me read to you what it feels like to be a five from the road back to you. And so this is what it's like to be a five. I can take care of myself and I think others should do the same. Could do the same, I'm sorry, could do the same. I don't always say things out loud, but in my head, I am pretty sarcastic and cynical. I often feel awkward around other people. I'm okay if people ask me a few specific questions about myself, but I don't like it when people ask and want too much information. I need time alone. If I want people to know how I feel, I will tell them. I generally wish they wouldn't ask. I think thoughts are more reliable than feelings. I need a couple of days to process and experience or know how I feel about something. People are wasteful. I hold on to what I have. Often I find I would rather observe than participate. I trust myself. This means I think about things for a while and then I make my own decisions. I can't understand why people get together to just hang out. I'm a listener. I have to be very careful with my time and energy. I get tired when I have to be with people for too long. I often felt invisible as a child, 
Sometimes as an adult, I choose to be invisible. Sometimes I think I should be more generous. It's hard for me. In groups, being uninformed makes me very uncomfortable. I don't like big social gatherings. I'd rather be with a few people. And material possessions don't make me very happy. So that's what it feels like to be a five. Now fives prefer to observe. They collect knowledge and information and this gives them a sense of control and a defense against feelings of inadequacy. Now the best and worst thing to ever happen is to um, the internet. The internet is the advent of a wonderful thing for all of us, um, but it also can be a black hole for people who are five on the Enneagram because fives are the ones who like to collect information. So just think about how much information, anytime you Google anything, there is. Well, for a five, say they were to look up how to fix a toilet. Well, suddenly they have all this information before them, and so they would be inundated with information, and they would just keep exploring more about how a toilet works and probably find out the history of the septic system and um, public water, and they could just tell you all these facts. So what, what for any of us who aren't Enneagram 5s would be a 10-minute search on, on Google and then a, watching a YouTube video a couple times. For Enneagram 5s, it can take the whole day. Um, for them to discover more and more information because they really like having more information. Now, they are able to compartmentalize, and so they compartmentalize as a defense mechanism against feeling overwhelmed for a five. To maintain privacy, they will tell a group of friends one part of the story and another group of friends another part of the story. So both books that I read um, talked about for Enneagram Fives, the worst thing that could ever happen to them is for all of their friends to be together in one place. So like a surprise party where you called up every friend that they had, <coughs> excuse me, would be a worst case scenario for a five because they've compartmentalized their lives. So like their hiking group will know certain things about them and their boating group knows another things, and their craft group knows other things, but if they don't want everybody to be together because they don't want people to know everything about them. They likely only tell one or two people everything there is to know about them. That's just kind of how fives operate. They're the most emotionally detached on the Enneagram, and they want to have control over unpredictable feelings that might threaten to overwhelm them. So that's kind of their way to control. Now we've been looking at the wings. So the wings are the numbers right beside. So five, it would be a four or a six. So five with a four wings, they tend to be more creative. They are sensitive and empathetic. They would rather process their feelings alone than in a group, and they are more likely to experience melancholy. Now fives with a six wing, they are more anxious, cautious, and skeptical, but they're also the most social and loyal. They live more in their minds and will question authority and the status quo and they're more aware of their own fears. And then we've been looking at the stress and security numbers. So stress are what Enneagram fives revert back to. So that's when everything is going, seems like it's going wrong in your life. So you are stressed at work, you and your spouse are fighting, your kids are not living up to what you were hoping at the moment, you're not sleeping well, you're not eating well, you're not exercising. Kind of all that conglomeration tends to make us reverse um, in our numbers. And so they start to look like unhealthy sevens. So they hoard and cling more tightly to things. They turn their attention away from the needs of others and focus more solely on their own need for safety and independence. And they can also become frivolous and dis disorganized and distracted to the point of not being able to accomplish tasks. And then security. So there is a number that they, that they go to, that they move to when they are doing really well. When they've invited the Holy Spirit in to work on them, when they're doing that hard work and really understanding themselves better, and they start to look like healthy eights. And so they become more spontaneous and more outspoken and physically present. Oh, I forgot to admit, to say, so um, it's good to see you, Kendra. Thanks for watching. So those who are um, Enneagram 5, they are part of the head group. So two, threes, and fours those numbers are a part of the heart group. So they make decisions based on their feelings. Now five, sixes, and sevens, they are the head group. And so they make decisions based on thinking. And I forgot to mention in service and someone asked me, but eight, nines, and ones, they are part of the gut group. So they make decisions based on their gut. Kind of what their gut tells them to do is what they do. So I feel like for 
twos, threes, and fours, they get really frustrated with the other numbers, especially the head numbers, because we, and I'm a six, so that's why I'm putting myself in that category, we tend to take time. We want to think about it. We want to have pros and cons lists. We want to really weigh out the risk. Whereas twos, threes, and fours, they make decisions immediately because it's based on their feelings and their feelings are immediate. And so I can see how um, if you love someone who is um, of a different whole Enneagram subgroup that um, make decisions in a different way, it can be frustrating and you have to kind of give yourself the reminder, wait, they make decisions in a very different way. So as I just told you all, I am a six. And when I was reading the chapters on six, I was like, oh yeah, that's totally me. But as I was reading this week and rereading the about fives, I found myself more and more thinking, wow, I might have a five wing. And um, there were a lot of things in here that really stood out to me. And I am more introverted. And I feel like the older I get, the more introverted I become. So for me, the absolute worst thing that I could think of would be going to um, Times Square for New Year's Eve. Being around all those people totally overwhelms me. Um, touching, well, I guess you'd have coats on, but being that close to, to complete strangers, like I need my bubble. I like being able to breathe my own air and not share air with someone else unless it's my spouse. And so um, I think most fives would be in that category. They're mostly introverted, but that's not the only number with introverts. It just is a way that they operate. But for me, I definitely see it. I hoard time. That is what I hold uh, most sacred to me. And I love, I have the best job in the world. And sometimes it feels like I need to start hoarding a little more time um, because I give so much of myself away that at the end of the day, sometimes I find that I'm exhausted because I'm more introverted, especially nighttime things. They just take an extra dose out of me. Now I'm so so grateful that I can connect with so many people at different times. I mean, it's really meetings. Meetings are what drains me in a whole nother level. And so um, because I'm an Enneagram 6 and I'm motivated by fear, usually that fear trumps my desire to hoard time, um, but I still feel it. And so sometimes I start to realize I'm getting a little punchy, as I uh, told them in service. And so I define punchy as like when you start to say the things that you shouldn't even think about, but they start coming out of your mouth, like, okay, you know, you get a little frustrated and you start thinking like, oh man, why is this meeting not over? Or, you know, other things come to mind, but then they start coming out of your mouth. And that's when I know I need to remove myself from being around people because I'm no longer um, a help anymore. And I'm no longer looking like Christ in the world. I am starting to look totally like a human. It's like myself and like God isn't even present. So for five, sometimes they hoard things when they get to that space. And so that's when I think I might have some five wing. So our biblical, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you about the root sin. So the root sin for people who are Enneagram five is avarice or greed. So they tend to hoard their intellect as well as material possessions, and they tend to be stingy with their emotions. So kind of think of Ebenezer Scrooge from A Christmas Carol. Now our biblical example is Zacchaeus, and I'm so sad if you missed service today because Miss Bobby helped to um, teach our children the wonderful Zacchaeus song about Zacchaeus being a wee little man, and it was just precious. So just come to church next time and you won't miss it. But here's our story from, uh, Zach, uh, from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. So hear now these words. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Through it, a man there was named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood up there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. So we're taking a little bit of liberties with the text um, for this, for the Enneagram 5, but it's not hard to read into a little bit more of what Luke was writing about. So we have Zacchaeus, who is a chief tax collector. Now tax collectors were kind of the most hated profession, one of the most hated professions in the Roman world. 
So the Roman government had taxes that they imposed on people, not too dissimilar from our own system. But the tax collectors, they were permitted, they were allowed by law to take extra. That was how they made their money. So say the Roman government wanted 30, 40% of your income, then the tax collectors could take an extra percentage on top of that. And it was well known that they did this. So I'm thinking for our wonderful Enneagram ones who are all about justice and bettering the world, like, man, I bet a lot of them were protesting daily, the wonderful tax collectors in the community. So Zacchaeus was not liked by anyone in this crowd. However, he found out that Jesus was coming into town and he'd heard about this Jesus and maybe God had kind of put it on his heart to seek out Jesus, find out more about this Jesus. Now, likely Zacchaeus is an Enneagram 5 and so he did not really want to be in the crowd because being in the crowd meant touching skin with people who are not related to you, being really being around a ton of people, again, who also hated him. And so he did not really want to be right among all the people. I'm being more introverted. So he happened to see a tree. He was also shorter. So he found a tree and he climbed up in that tree. Now, the wonderful thing about being up there is he could think he could look around without being noticed by a lot of people. Like it's the perfect place to people watch. I'll enjoy people watching. So I imagine Zacchaeus had a great vantage point for people watching. And Jesus happened to come by. Now, Zacchaeus, we're not told that Jesus and Zacchaeus had ever met before. But Jesus walks by and happens to look up and call out by name Zacchaeus. Now, we know that Jesus is the Son of God. And so we see Jesus doing this, especially in the Gospel of John. But it's just a beautiful reminder that God, that God through Jesus Christ, saw exactly into Zacchaeus and called him. And so Jesus said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Now, for people who are Enneagram 5, their house is their fortress. Like, that is their sacred place, and they're very careful about who they allow into their house and who they don't. Because to allow someone into your house means to allow them to see exactly who you are, and they like to compartmentalize. So they have to really trust you to invite you into their really sacred place. I mean, it's sacred for all of us, but it's a different, kind of a different level of um, privacy for people who are Enneagram 5, and that's a big deal for them. So he immediately um, submitted. He agreed to Jesus' request to stay at his house. Jesus knew he probably wasn't going to be invited over. And um, everyone in the community wanted to invite Jesus over because Jesus was known for healing and teaching and knowing that you were near the kingdom of God. I mean, to be around Jesus, I just can't imagine that peace. So everyone wanted him to come to their house. But here Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I am coming to your house today. So people grumbled, as we see in scripture, like we still do today. They found out that Jesus was going to Zacchaeus' house, and remember, all of them wanted to go, and suddenly they are a little upset, because this is like the worst sinner of all the sinners, the chief tax collector, the one who has stolen from all of them, and Jesus is going to his house. So they say, let's see, what do they say? He is going to be the house of one who is a sinner. And so Zacchaeus heard this, because they probably weren't quiet. And he stood there and said to Jesus, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I give to the poor. And remember, he was rich. So this was a lot for him to give half of all that he had to the poor. And then he said, and if I've defrauded anyone of anything, which he was a tax collector, so he likely had done this, I will pay back four times as much. So not just what I stole, defrauded, but I will pay back four times as much. So immediately Zacchaeus was redeemed. As soon as Jesus started interacting with him, he took on a whole different demeanor. He was no longer worried about his privacy. He was no longer worried about hoarding his possessions, his wealth. But now he was willing to share and even make amends for the ways that he had failed to love his neighbors as he defrauded them. So Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Now our other example of someone who is likely an Enneagram 5 is Mary, the mother of Jesus. So Mary likely was redeemed very early on because she allowed God to do things that none of us um, would likely have submitted to as quickly as she did. So when she was likely a teenager, the Holy Spirit, the, an angel came and said, God wants you to carry God's child. Are you willing to do this? And she was. And so knowing though she was unmarried, and so 
Um, she was engaged to Joseph, but it was known that they weren't married yet. And so to be suddenly pregnant and to give birth, maybe even before the marriage, um, was very scandalous in that day and could lead to death. That was a punishment for this activity. And yet she was willing to do it knowing it would mean her privacy was totally gone and knowing it would mean she, she would be chastised by her community, which I'm sure she was. Because um, it's kind of unbelievable when, when you tell people, well, I'm carrying the Son of God. Um, it seems far-fetched in our understanding of the world, but not in God's world. So as we see in Luke 1, around verse 15, um, Jesus, the, the wonderful baby, has been born, and the shepherds, who were gar guarding their flocks by night, they had been visited, just been visited by angels. And so in verse 15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had told, been told to them about this child. And all, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all of these things and pondered them in her heart. So that's a very typical response for someone who is Enneagram 5, to ponder those things in their heads and their hearts. So it was really hard to find someone who is an Enneagram 5. They tend to kind of fly under the radar. I sent several emails came up with the questions, and um, it was hard to find someone who would admit to being an Enneagram 5. Um, sometimes their spouses were like, I kind of think my spouse could be this. Um, but I did find someone. It's a younger person, so if the answers seem like they might be from someone younger, that is the case. So the first question. People who are 5 on the Enneagram tend to be private and compartmentalize their lives as they fear surrounding themselves with others. How does this resonate with you? And this was the person's response. Yes, I do not like to be surrounded by other people. Second question. Enneagram fives crave knowledge and are tempted to know as much as they can about particular topics as they see knowledge as power. How has this lived, lived out in your life? What topics do you consider yourself to be an expert? And this person responded, I read all the time. I would not say I'm an expert but I do know a lot about animals. So that's something that this young person is very passionate about and knows a lot about. The third question, avarice or greed is the deadly sin for Enneagram fives, as they have a need to retain and protect what little they already have, fearful that there will not be enough. So how have you wrestled with avarice or greed? And the person responded, I'm always crazy when others steal my things, even when they have it. This person has siblings, so it might pertain to them. And this person struggles with it. And the last question, because Enneagram 5s are good listeners and have a wonderful ability to listen and absorb, they can be objective and help people come to a place of understanding their truth. They do this through detachment. How have you been able to use your gifts as an Enneagram 5 to help others? And this person has settled many disputes in the neighborhood as people are out playing and been a good listener. So I'm grateful to all who have shared um, today in worship as we were going through the Enneagrams. People start cheering for their numbers, so maybe we'll start doing that too um, as we start to learn who else in the congregation is like us and how we can all seek to be redeemed in our numbers and allow the Holy Spirit into work. And we need our fives. They are our profound thinkers and they are our good listeners. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Brittany and Kathy, for watching and joining us. All right, see you guys later.